Namo Bhutthai. So in this video, I am sharing uh, my learnings from Middle Discourses 76. Uh, this is with Sandhika, Sandhika Sutta. The link to the entire discourse is available in description. And you can uh, read through the entire discourse at your end. It's a long discourse. It's like some, I think, more than 10 pages. So I am like taking out the main point from this discourse. Uh, uh, so what happened was that there was a wanderer, Sandhika. Uh, Buddha was living in the Gosita's monastery. And uh, there was a wanderer, Sandhika, who was carrying with him a large assembly of around 500 wanderers. And they were, you know, uh, do, doing a lot of uproar. And, you know, they were uh, engaged in all type, kinds of low talk about a lot of things. And, you know, and that time what happened is Ananda, Venerable Ananda was going through that way. And when they saw and Venerable Ananda coming through, when Ananda was the chief disciple of Buddha, one of the most senior disciples of the Buddha, very, very learned. So when they, when, he, when Ananda, when uh, Sadhika saw uh, uh, Ananda coming from a distance, he said okay, to all his people, is that just please shut your mouths and let's stay silent. We can hear some wisdom from uh, from, from Ananda because he's very highly learned. So they welcomed him, uh, gave him a seat and said that, please give a Dhamma talk uh, explaining your tradition, right? At that time, Buddha, the Buddhist tradition was also there, Buddha's uh, tradition, and there were other traditions also that were there. And most possibly, the tradition where he was coming from was the Ajivika tradition, right? Which were like the fatalists. They believed that everything is just determined and, you know, nothing is in our control. So, he asked to give a Dhamma talk, explaining to Ananda, to Ananda that please share your uh, 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 Dhamma knowledge. And then, uh, Venerable Ananda said, that uh, Sandhika, uh, the a blessed one, knows and sees four ways that negate the spiritual life and four kinds of unreliable spiritual life. So there were basically total eight things that are coming out in the sutta. Four, th four ways that negate the spiritual life. That means if you make some those kind of you know assumptions or actions, then you will basically negate your spiritual life, all your spiritual effort. That is the one thing that he is trying to explain. Second is four kinds of unreliable spiritual life. So basically, eight things he is going to tell. So then he said, uh, Skanda asked, Master Ananda, what are the four ways that negate the spiritual life and the four ways of unreliable spiritual life? So first he, Ananda explained, four kind, four ways that negate the spiritual life. So, uh, if this video is getting long, then we will just focus, I will break it into two parts. right? Uh, okay, so first way of uh, negating a spiritual life, where uh, a particular teacher who has a doctrine or a view that there is no meaning in giving, sacrifice and offering, there is no fruit or results of good and bad deeds, there is no afterlife, right? The teacher says there, there is no afterlife, there is no fruit or results of, that means if you do good deeds, then also there is no result, if you do bad deeds, then also there is no result. There is no such thing as mother, father or beings who are reborn spontaneously and there is no ascetic or Brahmin who is basically a fully realized one. That means there is no ascetic or a Brahmin who realizes something with his own insight, like the Buddha did. Then he talked about with the person is this person is made up of four primary elements. When they die, the earth in their body merges, collapses. The water in the body merges and collapses with the main. So basically, he is saying that there are four primary elements, and when he dies, then it all merges in the various elements. Then um, offerings dedicated to gods end in ashes. Giving is a doctrine for morons. When anyone affirms a positive teaching, it's just a hollow, false nonsense. Both the foolish and the astute are annihilated and destroyed when their body breaks up and they don't exist after that. That is the first way where, uh, 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 which is a uh, way of a negating of spiritual life. So basically, uh, then he says that when a sensible person reflects that he is saying that uh, both uh, a person who is accomplished in knowledge when he breaks up, when his body breaks up he will also meet the same fate as well as a lay person whose body breaks up meets the same same fate so it cannot be like that and a sensible person would kind of move away from that kind of a teaching so that is the first thing second way is that uh, basically that if you kill steal lie then everything is okay right so basically it comes out that the one who acts does nothing wrong when they punish, mutilate, torture, aggrieve, oppress, intimidate 
or when they uh, uh, encourage others that means go ahead and do whatever you want there will be no implications nothing bad is done when they kill steal break into houses plunder wealth steal from isolated buildings commit adultery lie if you reduce all the living creatures of this earth to one heap so no so basically you do go and do any kind of bad deeds and no evil will come to you that is a, like a second uh, then giving and sacrificing and encouraging others to do the same no merit comes from that right so if you basically give or you encourage others to give there is no merit from that in giving self control restraint and truthfulness there is no merit right in giving self control self restraint over the senses and truthfulness there is basically no merit so that kind of a teaching again it negates the spiritual life so basically a sensible person who follows those teachings so there is this thing that uh, yeah what venerable anand is saying a sensible person who to the best of their would to the best of their ability not practice such spiritual path so any spiritual path which has these things right that you know there is no effect of whatever deed you do right for example the ajivikas they had this thing that do you do whatever everything is predestined so these kind of teachings buddha said for example no afterlife if a teaching says that there is no afterlife buddha says don't follow that teaching right if you and if they practice them they wouldn't succeed in the system of the skillful skillful teaching right that means the whatever spiritual effort that they put will go for a waste right okay then okay so that was the second way that you know uh, that i already already explained third way is there is no cause or reason for the corruption of sentient beings that means if a particular person becomes corrupt or wrong there is no cause for it he just becomes like that right now this is sometimes if you just think on these things it is uh, you know uh, wrong uh, you feel internally that it is wrong to assume that something just gets corrupted due to there is some cause that will be there right okay if you put some food also out in the open and it gets stale there is some cause because it gets come in comes in contact with air and everything and the bacteria develops nothing can be without cause so these kind of teachings which say that there is no cause and especially here i think the context is set towards ajivika teachings which were like into that everything is fatalistic everything is predetermined deterministic teachings so venerable ananda was trying to pinpoint that these are the wrong teachings don't follow them so he says there is no cause or reason for the corruption of sentient beings sentient beings are corrupted without cause there is no cause for purification that means a person will become purified also without any cause any reason there is no power no energy no human strength that means a human will not achieve anything due to his strength he he doesn't need to exert any right effort because he he can, doesn't have the energy to exert right effort all sentient beings all living creatures all beings all souls lack control power and energy molded by destiny circumstance and nature they experience pleasure and pain in the six classes of rebirth so again a sensible person would reflect and say that this is wrong teaching fourth then this is actually a very long thing uh, i'm just taking out the main thing from, from here so basically there there are seven substances that are not made not derived not created without a creator right basically what they are trying to say is that it's like everything is creator originated i'm just trying to understand myself here they are seven substances that are not made not derived not created not without a creator barren steady as a mountain right they don't move or deteriorate each other so there's a lot of things if you chop off someone's head with a sharp sword you don't take anyone's lives the sword simply passes through the gap so again you commit anything wrong and it is just like a procedure that is happening there is no effect that will come on you there is no consequence that will come on you there are 8.4 million great eons through which foolish and astute transmigrate before bringing an end of to suffering again this is basically pointing out towards the jain doctrine of you know 84 lakh yoni right 84 lakh uh, worms a person gets transmigrated until he re- receives realization buddha is saying this is wrong this is basically that you are trying to say that in that whatever time you can do whatever wrong that you want to do and it's like that 84 lakh you complete and then you achieve a full enlightenment which is totally wrong right that is coming out by 
they live through this by this preceptor observance of fervent austerity or spiritual life i shall force unripened deeds to bear the fruit uh, transmigration so so again basically this is like saying that i transmigrate i transmigrate and then uh, upon transmigration that means upon keeping taking birth i will become free from suffering buddha says this is the fourth way so so what i will do is that i will maybe break this video right, right now and we will continue this video on as a part 2 of this particular middle discourse and we will see what are the four ways of unreliable four kinds of unreliable spiritual life so if you have any comments thoughts do share in the comment section see you in the next video uh, on this uh, middle discourse namo buddhaye